Hey guys, it's Aaron. So I actually mentioned this during one of our live models that I had kind of inadvertently come up with kind of a neat model of a hinge. So I want to share with you guys how to do that. I mentioned doing it on a live model, but I guess we forgot. I'm not really sure what happened. It didn't happen. Uh, but I wanted to show this because it really is kind of a cool way to create a hinge. A lot of good modeling practices in it. So I'm going to stop talking about it and do it. So follow along. It's pretty easy. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think when we get done. All right. So I'm going to start with a rectangle. I'm just going to do something like maybe uh, one by 12, something like that. That's a, will be my initial shape. From there, I'm going to, on this inside corner, draw a line straight up and then put a circle at the top. And I'm not giving exact uh, dimensions on anything because you can kind of play with these dimensions or build to specific dimensions if you need to. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna draw a line from here to here and then I'm gonna erase some of the geometry. So I'm gonna get rid of this piece, this piece, and this piece, and that is the geometry I want. Now, with that, I'm going to select this whole path. I'm gonna say, follow me, and click on this surface at the bottom. And that's what I'm gonna to get to start with. Looks pretty good. There's a little bit of geometry to be cleaned up. Because I came in at such a tight corner right here, I ended up kind of messing up my geometry on the back, but that's okay, because I can clean that up pretty easy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line right here, and I'm gonna draw a line right here. That's gonna close up the back. We do have this extra geometry here, which is actually the outside edge of interior geometry. If I turn on the x-ray mode, you can see this is the geometry hanging out inside. We don't actually need that, so I'm just going to erase it, erase the edges. There we go. So now we're back to one solid piece. All right, so my uh, circle ended up breaking, so I got these segments. Not a big deal. I'm going to triple click, go to my soften and smooth window, and just toggle soften coplanar off and back on to get that soften like that. All right, looks good. I'm going to take this portion of my, you know what, actually, it looks short. So I'm going to grab this right here, and I'm going to pull it out um, another six inches. All right, that looks better. That looks like a better hinge. I'm going to triple click and make a group out of that. All right, so right now, the important thing I want to make sure I have right now is a solid group. It is still solid right now. Awesome. Now, what I'm going to do is outside the group, so I'm going to leave the geometry all in the group right there. I'm going to come here. Where's my lowest point? I'm going to come just below this lowest point. I'm going to draw a line out, and then I'm going to draw a line along the green axes the full length of the hinge. I don't actually need this. That was just uh, for reference. All right, so that... All right, Laura, you're messing with my view. All right, here we go. So now I'm going to take this line, right-click, and I am going to divide it into four pieces. All right, now, on, I'm gonna go from the end to this first point. I'm gonna draw a line straight across. I'm gonna draw a line this way. Hold on shift to constrain it to my next point, and then back. Now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. You get two rectangles like that. I'm gonna take each of those rectangles, push pull them up, and then get rid of the lines between them. Now, I'm going to triple click on this first extruded rectangle, make it a group. Same thing with the second. And now, I'm going to turn on my Solid Tools UI. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these rectangles, I'm gonna hit subtract from this in this piece select the second rectangle again subtract all right you guys see where I'm going with this got half that hinge piece so what I do now is make this the copy make the other hinge before I do that though I'm gonna come in here to this I'm gonna real quickly create some uh, some screw holes so pretty simple I'm gonna draw a line down from this piece line down from this piece uh, what I want to do is have three holes, one here, one here, one here. So I'll draw a line down from this piece as well. And then I'm going to take this line 
and use divide again to divide it to three pieces. And then I'll say, okay, this is where one screw hole is going to go. This is where the other screw hole is going to go. And the third screw hole is going to go right here. And I'll create that screw hole by putting in a circle. And then I will take that circle, move it from the center to here and to here by hitting that modifier key with move. All right, then I can get rid of these lines. I could have done that with guides. It would have been less destructive, but you know me. I'm just not a guides guy. It's, it's, a, it's a hard habit to get into, and I'm not very good at it. All right, now before I just push pull these through to make holes, I'm going to countersink just slightly. So I'm going to come in here and say offset this circle. And I'll put the same offset on three circles, so I'm going to double click and double click. Double clicking moves at the same amount as last time. Now I can push pull, click here, move it to the back edge, and I just double click on these two also. And then finally, to create my countersink, I'm just going to select the three circles here. Oops, not the inside face, but the, come on, the edge. There we go. And now I need to push it in. So to make sure I can strain along the red axes, I could click here and hit the right arrow key to constrain to red. Instead, I'm just going to use this line right here as a reference. Click here, start dragging it back. All right, there we go. That's my countersink. So that's my half a hinge. Now the cool part is to make the other half of the hinge, all I have to do is select right here, use rotate, let me hit the modifier key to make a copy, make sure I am go to this middle, this is the direct middle of the hinge, I click right there, and I'm going to come out here, spin that around, and like that, we have two hinge pieces that perfectly connect together. One last thing I might want to do here, I might want to come in with a circle, I need a I broke that circle pretty good, so I need a center line, but I can put a circle right here, pull that up, push that end all the way out the other side. On this end, I'm going to offset it about that much, pull that up, pull this up, and triple click this, make that a new group or component would work as well. And there we go with that, I have a perfect hinge. What I could do here is I could take one of these and rotate it. When I rotate it, what I want to do is I'd actually want to move from the center of the circle. So go like this and see, look at that. Because I dropped it down enough, there's, it, there's no interference. I'm not hitting myself there. Hitting Well, the hinge is not hitting itself. I'm not hitting myself at all. But I can see how that rotate works. So that is a pretty good hinge. You could use the same method to make uh, any number of pieces here. I used four, you could do six. If you did an odd number like five, you'd have to create the two halves of the hinges separate because one would have uh, two little returns here, one would have three, but there you go. Pretty simple, quick and easy hinge using native tools and solid tools. So I hope you guys like that. Uh, like I said, I was kind of messing around with drawing a hinge and, and drew that and thought, that's kind of neat. They've got some good steps in there, got some solid tools, uh, got some repeat offsets and push pulls and rotate, a lot, a lot of good commands. So hopefully you followed along. If not, if you're just watching, then give it a shot yourself next time you're sitting in front of SketchUp. If you did like that, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, click subscribe. We release a couple videos every week and we do a number of live models you'll be notified of those if you subscribe to us most importantly though please leave a comment down below more and more of our content nowadays is being driven by your comments and we don't know what you want to see done in these videos if you don't tell us we like making these models a lot but we like them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see thank you